Elsewhere, the bosses of five major tech firms, they've been testifying at a Senate hearing about what they're doing to protect children from online sexual exploitation. Well, the five have faced some pretty fiery questions today, with Meta boss Mark Zuckerberg being asked, what the hell were you thinking over an Instagram prompt that directed users to possible child abuse material? Well, Mr Zuckerberg and the boss of TikTok, they voluntarily agreed to testify, but the others, the other three, the bosses of Snap, X, formerly Twitter, of course, and Discord, they initially refused. They were sent subpoenas forcing them to appear. All have hundreds of millions of young users, of course. Now, senators are particularly worried about a rise in reports of explicit images of children being shared, including those created with artificial intelligence. Well, in his opening remarks, Senator Lindsey Graham, who's the top Republican on the committee, took aim at Facebook founder and chief executive Mark Zuckerberg. Mr Zuckerberg, you and the companies before us, I know you don't mean it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. You have a product, you have a product that's killing people. And I use it, we all use it. There's an upside to everything here, but the dark side hasn't been dealt with. It's now time to deal with the dark side because people have taken your idea and they've turned it into a nightmare for the American people. They've turned it into a nightmare for the world at large. Well, you heard some of the applause there. Uh, Kristen Bride is a social media reform advocate. Her son Carson committed suicide after being a victim of anonymous cyberbullying. Now, before the hearing, she said social media companies were more concerned with profit than safety. We were looking for accountability from these social media companies to actually follow through with what they're, they say that they're going to do. We're going to hear a lot of promises today and a lot of, and then we also see broken promises. So what did we hear from the firms themselves? Here's one of the responses, this one from Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg in his opening remarks. I, I, I'm sorry for everything that you've all gone through. It's terrible. No one should have to go through the things that your families have, have suffered. And this is why we invest so much and are going to continue doing industry leading efforts to, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. Let's take you now live to our North America correspondent, Nomia Iqbal, who's in Washington. And Nomia, that moment that we just played there, Mark Zuckerberg uh, addressing some of the families in the room, it was a really powerful moment, but one he was directed to make, wasn't he? That's right. Uh, he was really grilled by the Republican Senator Josh Hawley, who prompted him to get up and look at the families. And Ben, there were loads of takeaway moments in, in the hearing. But I think for me, certainly it was the presence of the families. Uh, they, these are people who say that they have lost their children to social media. And right from the beginning, their presence was felt. They were a real force to be reckoned with. So when the CEOs entered, they were hissing at them throughout their testimonies, they would laugh and applaud the senators. And it, it, in some ways, I think it fueled the sort of combative energy that we saw. It fueled that tension between lawmakers and the CEOs, Mark Zuckerberg and the head of TikTok, particularly uh, coming in for the most scrutiny. And um, that then led to that dramatic moment that you just played there of Mark Zuckerberg turning around and saying to those families, I apologize for your suffering, but also explaining what, what Meta was doing to try and make the platform safer. And that was what all the CEOs were here to do, to try and defend themselves and, and explain to lawmakers what measures they were taking to keep children safe whilst also empowering children and parents but for lawmakers it just wasn't good enough they want these ceos to endorse key bills that they want to pass through congress yeah and normia it is a familiar allegation and we heard it once again there from a family member who had lost a son to suicide um, that familiar refrain that these firms are putting profit before safety and 
Once again, some of the, the numbers, the statistics that were cited in that hearing today, one report, Instagram's own internal study saying 24% of users between the age of 13 and 15 had received unwanted sexual advances in the last seven days. Mark Zuckerberg was asked about it and he said, I don't want to answer that. And that's because the allegation is that they did nothing about it. So they're really under pressure to prove that they are taking this seriously and not putting profit first. That's right. And for lawmakers, the only way they can prove that is by endorsing some of the bills that they want passed. Uh, specifically, those bills include COSA. This is the Kids Online Safety Act. There's also Stop Child Sexual Abuse Material. And this chips away at tech companies' ability to, uh, sorry, their legal protections to allow victims to sue them. I think what was interesting was that, again, going back to the families, uh, the, the lawmakers kept saying, well, families should be able to sue you. They should be able to sue you. And, um, you know, and some of them said, well, they can. Mark Zuckerberg said that we are being sued. And th there is criticism here that, well, actually, Congress should be passing laws. Uh, it's been, I think, more than a decade since one child safety law was passed, and that was a pretty narrow one. So there is pressure on Congress to do something. And there is will to do it, by the way. I, I don't think I've ever seen Republicans and Democrats so united as I saw them united today. So that's the big question is, will this hearing yield anything? Will Will it result in any kind of concrete legislation? Normia, good to have you there. Thanks very much. That's Normia Iqbal there joining us live from Washington. I want to talk to Andy Burrow now. He's the former head of child safety online policy at the NSPCC and advisor at the Molly Rose Foundation. That's a charity that focuses on suicide prevention in children. Andy, thank you for being on the programme. Um, Normia there explaining some of what we heard. And it was a rare opportunity, this, wasn't it, to grill the bosses of the five biggest social media platforms. But I wonder whether you heard enough. Were you reassured by anything that you heard today? Well, it was good to see um, senators take this issue seriously over several hours of hearings today, Ben. But really what we saw from the five big tech chief executives was more of what we've seen from these hearings before, a trail of obfuscation and denial. We saw all five of the CEOs uh, say one after the other about how important this issue was to them, emphasising that they were parents and they took this seriously, only to then discover that three of them had to be subpoenaed to actually turn up in Washington DC today. We saw Mark Zuckerberg say in his opening remarks that he didn't think that there was a connection between his platform and the negative impacts on mental health for teenagers and young people. That's despite back in 2019, internal emails in the company warning of a palpable risk of further deaths because of how Instagram's algorithms were recommending suicide and self-harm content. So more of the same with big tech chief executives, just really in denial. And our correspondent in Washington uh, making the point there that uh, Republicans and Democrats were united. And, it, and it, there's a sense that something could change because there is that unity in terms of bringing in perhaps new legislation to force action on the part of the social media giants. But the issue here is that it is cross-border. This needs a global unified response. Um, we know that the EU has struggled to put measures in place. They are different to those in the United States and elsewhere around the world. Just explain what is being done around the world to try to present a united response to what needs to be done to prioritise child safety online. Well, we are seeing measures um, around the globe to start to introduce uh, legislation. It's much needed legislation because it's very, very clear that that's the only way that the incentives will be there for tech companies to take children's safety seriously. So here in the UK, we've seen the Online Safety Act passed. That means that there's um, a statutory regulator who will now impose duties of care on platforms to identify and address uh, reasonably foreseeable harms. Uh, we have seen legislation passed uh, in the EU and further legislation specifically relating to child abuse um, is currently being considered. But the US is the big prize here. And I think one of the objectives for senators today was to absolutely draw attention to the scale of entirely preventable harm that we're seeing children face on social networks to try and make sure that child safety legislation on Capitol Hill 
goes to the floor because, as you say, there is a real spirit of bipartisanship here. Clearly, that's very unusual in the US, but you know we've seen that in legislatures right around the world. If this goes to a floor vote in the next few months, the US can pass legislation. And obviously, given that most of these companies are US-based, that would be a massive, massive step forward. Briefly for us, Andy, how confident are you that that will happen soon? Well, we absolutely can see signs of progress around legislation, but it has to happen because it is only through legislation and regulation that we will see the dial really change. Otherwise, we will just see more and more of this preventable harm affecting children and families in the UK and right around the world. Andy, it's so good to have you with us tonight. Thank you. That's Andy Burrow there, former head of child safety and online policy at the NSPCC. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, you're watching BBC News.